church? All right. If you would stand, please. All right, just a couple things to remind you about. Thursday morning, Thursday morning is Thanksgiving morning, and it'll be our annual Thanksgiving outreach. You're welcome to be a part of that. And if you uh, want to help serve the homeless in the Baltimore area, meet here at 8 o'clock. It'll be a great morning. If you have any kind of warm clothing that you can um, bring uh, to share with the homeless, to give to the homeless, obviously you're not sharing it. You won't be taking it back. Uh, you'll be giving it to them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a bad use of the verb there, share. Give, to donate, to, uh, uh, to bless the homeless with. So that will happen on Thursday. And also coming up, the MBCNS uh, Christmas Banquet. I, I think I've said winter banquet. It is a Christmas banquet. All right, Christmas is the season that we're in now, or almost, right? Okay, so uh, that'll be uh, December 6th, and you can uh, buy tickets at the college office, or you can also purchase your tickets online, okay? All right, Lord, thank you for gathering us together tonight in our church uh, building here. We thank you for uh, this place that you've uh, given us by your grace. We thank you for uh, the songs you put in our heart. Uh, for this evening that we're about to enjoy together as the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Quicken us, Lord, by your spirit. Uh, let us rejoice in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will. Hear the joyful sound 
of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that yes the world will see that our god
lost its sting. Now God and man united once again. There's power in the blood of Jesus to save a soul with mercy and forgiveness. The veil was torn and death has lost its sting. You are mine. I'm yours and you are mine. 
Lord, we live to give you praise, to bring you glory, God. Thank you. To worship you, to thank you for all that you've done. Yes, God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Just bless our service, God, in Jesus' name. great to be in the presence of the Lord. Huh? Amen. Thank you. Right now, we'd like to welcome anyone who's here for the first time. So if you're a guest with us, uh, please raise your hand. Allow us to welcome you. Allow us to bring you something tonight. Anyone here for the very first time, just raise your hand. We have something for you. No? We have someone? All right. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. It's great that you're, you're here. Um, there's a great uh, bit of information on that card, and there's also, I think, a beverage coupon there. I think that's right. Am I right, Pastor Jason? Yes, okay, thank you. Also at the Welcome Center, they can help you on Monday night, Seven Footsteps. You're invited to be a part of that. And thanks for being a part of our assembly tonight. So the, the uh, church grows in a couple of ways. People come, and others are born. And we'd like to welcome uh, a new member to our church. And... Uh, there she is. Okay. Wow. That's a big photo. Wow. That's Isabella J. Post. And they're born to Rebecca and David Post. And the numbers are, because, you know, some people like that, six pounds, two ounces, 20 inches long. So, all right. Thank you. Now, Pastor Pete with Stara. This is the offering. Glad you're ready. Um, this morning's message was awesome. I was thinking about a business transaction or a business model that we often refer to in the world of sales. And that is if I want to sell you something, then I must build value in the item that I'm selling you. And that value, value needs to outweigh the sum of money that I'm asking. It's pretty simple, you, you know this. If I'm trying to sell you a $10,000 car, then I need to convince you that the car is worth $10,000. You know, Carfax, uh, Kelly Blue Book, good wax job. And at some point, the, the scale is tipped in your mind, and you say, all right, I'm in. Um, so, you know, that sounds really easy. The problem is perception. Some people will look at a $10,000 car and say, yep, that's worth it. But then somebody else might say, no way. I'm not spending $2,000 on that car. Here's where it gets tricky. How people view things has an effect on the scale. So I'm here talking about the offering, and it would be good if I could build value in uh, something so that you would give your money. Um, I could do that by talking about the church. I could make a long list, tell you the church is great, give you amazing missionary stories, all of that stuff. And I do believe that you, if you love your church or you feel that this is a church that you're called to and you see it as the fullness of Christ and you love your church, that it makes it a lot easier to give because you, um, you see value in it. But actually, um, it's kind of a risky, risky business to, to work that way because maybe some, some days you don't feel like the church is that valuable. You can have a bad day, right? So we, we, we want you to look beyond that and look to Christ. And we re this morning, I love the sentence that Christ is irreplaceable. He is just unspeakable, unthinkable. This is Christ. M a massive amount of value. And tithing is me realizing the value of Christ. 
It's a transaction between me and Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. There's, there's really nothing else to talk about. You, you are here in, in this church, and you are uh, sitting in greater grace chairs, and there's a greater grace basket going to go by in front of you. But actually, this is just between you and Jesus. And Jesus, at one point in eternity past, did this for us. He, he, he weighed, he evaluated, he perceived and saw what we were and what we were worth and then counted the cost. And he knew every detail of that cost. He knew uh, the depth of misery that he would endure. He knew every blow, every moment of agony. Uh, and he said, yes, I'm going to give up. I'm going to give. I'm going to give because you're worth it. So for the offering today, as you tithe, use us for your transaction with Jesus. Just take the church out of the picture. Take everything out of the picture. Take the, your whole life, your details, the problems. Just remove it all and say, this is between me and Jesus, and I will make this transaction between me and him because he is worth it. It's a good deal. So that's the offering this morning. So let's pray. Wait, this evening. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your, for your amazing gift to us, Father. Thank you for that moment in eternity past where you decided that we were worth the cost. An amazing moment that must have been, or however it happened, we don't know, but it's incomprehensible really to us. And as we give today, we think of that, Father, and nothing else. In Jesus' name, amen.
deep and let the deep call out to me. I want to lose myself in your love. So let it rain. God bring you to life and stand. <laughs> You're already brought to life, right? All right. Turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 6. Tonight we are speaking on, on faith, and we are looking at Joshua chapter 6. And there is a great story there on faith. So verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said, Unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. You shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall you do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day you shall come to the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Seven, six days, they went around how many times? Once a day, so that's a total of six times. On the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, by the way, they walked how many times around it? Seven. So you add them up, how many do you have? 13, 6 and 7 is 13. So they walked around it, and then the priest shall blow the trumpets at the end of the seventh time on the seventh day, verse 5. And it will come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. <clears throat> Father, teach us about faith tonight, and lead us as all of us have our homes, our children, our jobs, our challenges, our temptations. Uh, some have boredom mundane li lives, normal, average, natural lives. Teach us faith. Guide us, Lord, in faith. Open our ears and our hearts to who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
I read a very interesting piece about the Arlington Cemetery guard, the guards of the unknown soldier. Has anybody been there? Have you been that, that place, the unknown soldier? Yes, buried there. The guards have a t 21 steps that they take. They, they um, wear their gloves wet so they have a good grip on their rifle. Uh, they are very disciplined men. The guards are changed every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The guards have to be between 5'10 and 6'2 inch, 6'2 tall, and the waist size cannot be beyond 30 inches. They must commit two years of life to guard the tomb, live in a barracks under the tomb, cannot drink any alcohol, listen to this, any alcohol on or off duty for the rest of their lives. They cannot swear in public for the rest of their lives and cannot disgrace the uniform or the tomb in any way. After two years, the guard is given a wreath pin that is worn on their lapel, signifying they served as guard of the tomb. There are only 400 presently worn. The guard must obey these rules the rest of their lives or give up the pin. Uh, the shoes are specially made with thick soles for the heat and cold from their feet. Uh, they have metal heel plates that extend to the top of the shoe in order to make the loud click as they come to a halt. There are no wrinkles, folds, or lint on the uniform. Guards dress for duty in front of a full-length mirror. The first six months of duty, a guard cannot talk to anyone nor watch TV. All off-time time is spent studying the 175 notable people laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. A guard must memorize who they are and where they are buried. President Taft, Joe Lewis, the Medal of Honor winner, uh, and others. <clears throat> in uh, 2003, Hurricane Isabel was approaching Washington and um, on the ABC Evening News, it was reported that because of the dangers from the hurricane, the military members assigned the duty of guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier were given permission to suspend the assignment. They respectfully declined the offer. No way, sir. Soaked to the skin, marching in the pelting rain of a tropical storm, they said that guarding the tomb was not just an assignment. It was the highest honor that can be afforded to a service person. The tomb has been patrolled continuously 24 7 since 1930. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> what is the meaning? They are paying to respect to our country, our military, a soldier buried there that no one knows who he is respecting the whole idea of dedication and commitment and honor. Well, what are we doing tonight? We are honoring God. We are honoring God with our presence and our hearts. There is no way to honor God without faith. Faith is not natural the faith we're talking about. Our faith is a gift, Romans 12, 3. Faith grows as we hear about God and hear God himself in our hearts. We make decisions by faith and have built our whole life based on faith. Behind faith is love. We spoke about it this morning. God has anointed our assembly because of you, because of him, because of us, because of faith in him. Many of us have a ragged and jagged past. 
but we have come to Christ by faith and he saved us and justified us by faith. He forgave us and did it through his son. He does not ask much from us, but simply to come as we are and believe in him. We are then born again and the spirit comes into our hearts and we decide to honor God. We see a lot of dishonor in the world today, a lot of arrogance, a lot of presumption, a lot of attitudes that contradict what it is that we believe. But it's always been that way. It's not a surprise to us. One university professor, I'm reading from uh, Chuck Swindoll's illustration book, the university professor boasted, one of my callings in life is to shatter the faith of naive fundamentalists as they come to my class at the university. Just give me a room of young, naive evangelicals and let me at them. You can watch them drop like flies, hit with raid, when I challenge their faith in a deliberate, consistent manner. In our church and school, Bible college and at GGCA, and our parents, I'm sure, talk to their young people. Um, Nathan McFarland has done a great job, Pastor Siraji and others, to prepare young believers in their faith. Because faith is at the very heart of our life. Not the presumptuous attitude of reason and uh, feelings alone, even though reason and feelings are part of life. But we are learning in the scripture that we take down the walls of Jericho, not by might, not by human power, but by faith. When they walked around the city of Jericho once and they said nothing, they did not know what would happen. But God said to do this for six days and then on the seventh, do it seven times. I'm sure and the second and third day, the sixth day, the seventh day, there were people like us in our hearts wondering, will it really work? What will God do? Does it make any difference? Does it really matter? Will anything happen today? Will anything happen tomorrow? This is ridiculous. That is natural. But we are on a journey of faith. When we got saved and Christ came into our life and someone told us lovingly, pray. Like um, Ray and the team were in the woods here nearby yesterday uh, going to the homeless people who live there and Ray shared that 650 people live back here in the woods and the areas of Dundalk and Middle, Middle River and back in the woods along Route 40 and so on and they do an outreach there and some of those folks have come here and one of them said Ray, thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for the things that you've given me, like clothing and, and food and whatever. But the thing that you really gave me was Christ. He is the one that has changed my life. What a beautiful testimony. And some came today for our dinner today. Faith. We are here because of faith. Pastor started it up in Maine with a word from God by faith. Then he shared it with us and all the other men of God through history as we study it and learn about it um, that, that live by faith. And then 
uh, the Spirit moving and speaking to us and, and what, how, how challenging it is sometimes. There's a story about uh, a man who was uh, lost in the desert, just dying for a drink of water. He stumbled on an old shack, ramshackled, windowless, roofless, weather beaten. He looked about this place, found a little shade. He looked around, he saw a pump about 15 feet away, an old rusty water pump. He stumbled over to it, grabbed the handle, began to pump, squeaking, not came, nothing came out, it was just squeaking up and down. Disappointed, he staggered back. He, offered, he looked to the side, an old jug was there, wiped the dirt and dust away, read a message. You have to prime the pump with all the water in this jug. Be sure you fill the jug again before you leave. He popped the cork out of the jug. Sure enough, it was almost full of water. He had faced a decision. If he drank the water, he could live. But if he poured all the water in the old rusty pump, maybe it would yield fresh, cool water from down deep in the well. He studied the possibility of both options. What should he do? Pour it into the old pump, take a chance on fresh, cool water, or drink what was in the old jug and ignore the message? Should he waste all the water on the hopes of those flimsy instructions written, not telling how long ago? Reluctantly, he poured all the water into the pump. Then he grabbed the handle, began to pump, squeak, squeak, squeak. Still nothing came out. Squeak, squeak, squeak. A little bit began to dribble, then a small stream, and then finally it gushed. To his relief, fresh, cool water poured out of the rusty pump. Eagerly, he filled the jug and drank from it. He filled it another time and drank again. Then he filled the jug, jug for the next traveler. He filled it to the top, popped the cork back on, and added this little note. Believe me, it really works. <laughs> you have to give it all away before you can get anything back. Yeah, that's the story of your life and mine. When Jesus came and said, give me everything. And we did. Now we, we dance around in faith. What was it like for these Jews when they are walking again and again and almost like saying they had to be quiet? Isn't that like our country isn't that like what should be happening in our hearts? Isn't that like the challenge of the hour? That the fine Christian folk that are spirit-filled and believing God for a blessing, that we will get there in God's timing, maybe not the first day or the second, but eventually in God's time, by faith, we reach the neighborhood, we go into the woods, we share our message. We go into the highways and byways. Maybe we lift up our voice on the street in love and faith and we blow the ram's horn on the seventh day after the seventh trip around. It is like that. Maybe missionaries have to walk in the streets of the cities where God sends them and just lift up their hearts and their eyes and faith and say, Lord, I don't want to come here in vain. I want to believe that you sent me. I, I want to believe you. Maybe you go to the library in the Bible college and you go there day after day and you lift up your heart to God and say, God, I got to study this. I don't know what you're doing, but you've asked me to study this book and I ask you to give it to me and I'm going to do it by faith you know what I mean it's a life of faith God will show you different ways we all have our stories uh, wanting an air conditioner in the summertime but not telling anybody there's a story about that in 1959 with Chuck Swindoll when he said, we just prayed, my wife and I, we were in Dallas. We were sweating bullets. We, we had a little apartment in seminary school. And uh, we were hot and 
sweaty all the time, but we agreed we're going to get an air conditioner. God will give us one, and we're not going to talk about it. We're going to just ask God. We went home for a quick vi visit to Houston. We were staying with her folks. Out of the clear blue, a phone call came from a guy who lived, lived across town who had known us years before. He said, Chuck, we've got an air conditioner. It's almost new. Could you use it? I thought, walk around the wall six times and then seven times. Is it really impossible? That's the way God operates. He brought it over, put it in our car trunk. We took it to Dallas, stuck it in the window, and it worked all through those four years. It was fantastic. Impossible situation, which we didn't denounce, and God met us in an impossible way. Just like God told Joshua to take Jericho, faith would win the victory. How about getting up in the morning? Have any of you ever gotten up in the morning by faith? How about it? I know one thing, I don't go to bed by faith. Have you ever gone to a prayer meeting by faith? Have you ever gone on an outreach by faith? Have you ever opened your mouth in a Starbucks restaurant by faith? Have you ever gone out on a mission trip by faith? Have you ever gotten beyond your own, your own self by faith? Yeah, we're learning it. Have you ever asked God to take your sin away by faith? This is um, Hebrews 6. Would you turn there, please? And we'll read about Abraham. Hebrews chapter 6. <clears throat> Verse 12. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith and patience. Inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, and remember Abraham and Sarah, no son, no children, Years go by, years go by. What an example. You know, the world of unbelief, the world of science, and we love the, we, we appreciate, I, I do appreciate those disciplines, but it's not enough. The world of morality, I appreciate morality, but it's not enough, like we said today. There has to be love. The mystery of life has to be addressed by love. The real meaning of life can only be understood by faith. The only way that God will really meet us is when we live by faith. And he said to Abraham, you will have a son. And Abraham lived in a measure of unbelief. And then it happened. He had this faith. And they had a son in their old age, which is a very amazing story. And it says, we are followers of him. We are in the same way. And by the way, the, the failures in life, we, I've seen people go away for years, five years, eight years, to one, one, 28 years, coming back. Uh, Brian, over here, Brian, 19 years, was in Lenox in Bible college, living in faith, and he left and was gone 19 years and in new jersey god said to him go go there go back come back to me come by faith it's kind of embarrassing to people sometimes when they come back and cross the parking lot and they think what will people say or right, why am i going back there or i feel ashamed or something along these lines yes but the key to the whole thing isn't you it is god who has called us to live by faith i go back by faith i get back to where god wants me to be and i live there and i stay there 
in God's plan, whatever that may mean. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that's how we learn how to live. Also, we raise our children by faith. That's a beautiful thing, to lead them by faith. Mom, I don't want to do that. Well, you're in our family, and we are following God, and you're following God with us until you're 18 years of age or whatever age you want. You, you can use 40 if you want. You're following God until you're 40 years old. Now behave. Okay, so, so uh, you know, they, we are, how are we living? We are God's people. Remember, pastor teaching us, you bring your kids to the church. Remember, teaching us three services a week. I'm sure it has kept me from a lot of trouble. It's showing up by faith, like just going around the city. Boy, we didn't get much done today, did we? No, but we're living in a plan, and God is in it. We went around another day. Wow, hey, Levi, nothing happened. I know, Jacob, I don't know what's going on. Just be quiet. Don't talk about it. Okay. Joshua, get angry with us. Okay. Third day, what's going on? This is true. This is true. That great things happen because of our life of faith. We read it in Hebrews chapter uh, 10. Turn there with me, please. The end of 10. It's a great. We should all memorize this. 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of what? Patience. After you have done the will of God. I have things in my mind. I was with Yorma Imanen many years ago on Kortkevod and Kato. Some of the Finns may know that street in Helsinki. Pastor Yorma was a security guard. Uh, after Bible college, he went to Bible college. We started a Bible college by faith. It was amazing. I, 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 one Finnish lady came to me in the early years, 77. She said, Pastor Shelley, you should start a Bible college. I said, I don't, what, who will teach in it? She said, you will. I go, okay, I, I'll think about it. So I talked to my wife about it. She said, yeah, it's a good idea to start. I go, well, even if there's a couple students, I should do it. So I did. Ninety-seven students joined that first year. That was amazing. And I thought, well, who's going to So we did it. And Sierra was there. Remember those years? Taya? That was amazing. What I just want to say, it's beyond us, isn't it? Okay, that's a Bible college. But there's many things, many things. We said we did something crazy. Mao died in China. We were living in Finland. Mao died in China. I read it in a read it in the magazine. Mao is dead. So I don't know where it came from. Let's go to China. Mao is dead. The wicked witch of the West is dead. <laughs> Let's go to China. So I go to we go to the pulpit in Finland. We're preaching. We're going to go to China with the gospel. And we're like, like, yes. There's like the pause, and then, yes. And we did, 16 of us. And we, we smuggled uh, 1,200 books into the, into the country. That, meaning we put it in our luggage, and we went through the border. That's what it means, smuggling. Our, you know, they, they looked in. They were, I don't know, they looked at our luggage. I think it was too embarrassing for them. It was right in the beginning of their open borders. And they just let us in. It was a, it's a great story. What can we say? Faith. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Faith. 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 Yes. Victory over sin. Sins are problems, but not with God. With God, he is greater than our sin. And we just live by faith, and we just realize he gave me victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is our message that people can't understand, like that university professor. And one day he will meet his Waterloo, that university professor. One day, perhaps, he will find 
what, that there really is a living God. Maybe the, the students would pray for him. I don't know how it will work. Or he will face God one day. It, all of us will. And the, the, th the thing that God has called us to is a life of faith. And it says we have need of patience. After we have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, and that's the thing, drawing back. We get so reasonable, we draw back from faith. We get so comfortable, we draw back from faith. We get oh, oh so, oh hum, oh normal, oh mundane that we draw back from faith. Um, we, we can draw back to the old ways. We can draw back to our family or draw back, gravitate to our, our, um, our culture or gravitate to some other thing that does not require faith. Maybe we just draw back in our heart and in our attitude. We stop living by faith. But forgiveness takes faith. Loving people is a life of faith. A prayer, praying and praying in prayer meetings are those meetings that are very poorly attended often. But, but people that have, are, are saying, okay, I'm going to go by faith. I'm going to look for God in the prayer meeting. I'm going to find God late at night or early in the morning. I'm going to believe God for something new in my heart. I'm going to believe that God is going to move and touch me and do this great work. And then look at chapter 11 for a moment before we finish. Verse 4, by faith. Well, 3 is amazing. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. You know... The scientific world, they cannot accept, they cannot do that. But we say the world came into existence by the word of God. God spoke it and it happened. God spoke it and we believed and it happened in us. It, we believe it, we live by faith. Verse 4, by faith Abel. 5, by faith Enoch. 7, by faith Noah. Eight, by faith Abraham, by faith Sarah, 11, by faith uh, Jacob, by faith Isaac, uh, by faith uh, 21, Jacob, by faith Joseph, 23, by faith Moses. And we have, they left Egypt, by faith Har Rahab the harlot, by faith the Jericho walls came down, what shall I say more? Verse 32. The time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, and Japheth, of David. Don't be so smart. How do we say that idiom? You're too smart for your own britches. Isn't it? Did I say that correct? Yeah, don't be so too smart for your own britches. Don't, be, don't get the Christian life down so well that you don't need faith to live in it. Don't, don't learn the Bible so well that you don't need the mystery of the Bible. Don't like learn the church life in such a way that you get so used to it that I don't need faith. You know, stir it up and live by faith. This world is needing a good dosage of love and love that works and faith that works by love. Why are you going to go to the tomb? And the girl, the ladies were walking, probably they were girls, young women were walking to the tomb. Hey, wait a minute, who's going to roll the stone away? Ah, who cares? Let's just go there because we love him. We love him. Has that ever happened to you? I was an hour and a half late for a meeting. I thought, I, could just, I can't go. I, I, it's just embarrassing. I, I'm an hour and a half late for the meeting. Ah, I'm going to go anyway. I just go there. Perfect timing by faith. Really. The ladies go to the tomb 
Ah, who, yeah, we're going to go, even though the stone is there, we'll just kiss the stone, that's all. We love Jesus who's buried in the stone, or behind the stone in the tomb. And as they went by faith, they didn't have any idea at that time that that stone would be rolled away by an angel. And they were right on time. And they thought it was the gardener. And there they are. And they're talking to Christ resurrected. And this is a life of faith. Uh, one time, I'm, not, I'm sorry to say, I was counseling a married couple. They drove down from New Hampshire to see me to get counseling in Massachusetts. And uh, I was there, and I fell asleep in the counseling session. <laughs> They're sitting there across from me, and then I, I just fell asleep. I fell asleep and I, I kind of I woke up and I looked at them and they're looking at me like, you know. <laughs> and I said, I, I'm so sorry. I, I can't believe I just did that. They got, no, we believe that. You know, that's okay. There are things you can be embarrassed about, but who cares? Live by faith. There are things you could be late for, but what, what's the big deal? Live by faith. Who are you anyway, Mr. Perfect? I'm, I'm saying in your mind, like, oh, my life has to be like so. Really? Aren't we called to faith? Haven't these people, these men and women in Hebrews 11, the only thing really worthwhile talking about in their lives is that they did it? They live by faith? It isn't the day-to-day -day picky, petty things in life. That's not where we're living. We're living in love. We're living in faith. This is what God has said, for it is impossible to please him without faith. So Peter denied the Lord, but almost like as bad as it was, so what? Christ is raised from the dead. So what? The stone is rolled away. Let's go. Peter, knock it off. Let's get moving. Let's believe him. And let's walk by faith. And don't bring it up. And notice in his two epistles, he never brings it up. He never writes it down. I denied him three times. Paul would have done it because he did it all the time. I am the one that persecuted. But Peter never did it. He never went back there. He didn't talk about it. It wasn't his life. He had a new identity because we are called to faith. Sisters and brothers in Jesus, we are called to a victory that is monumental, that is powerful. That's how we live. Let's pray that God will stir us up in works of great importance. I'm going to ask you just as we finish, I don't know how to proceed in our church except to keep going as we're doing and seeing people come in and be changed. We had a few salvations this morning and, um, and we have some real victories that are happening and I'm very thankful for every little part of it. But I also care about the young people over here who are so amazingly faithful and committed. But I also know that I, I need to use my gifts. I need to operate and function in a faith vision. I need to use my gifts in the Lord. I need to be participating and own it. And I'm just thinking that um, maybe God has something more for us in the region I say New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Maybe one Bible study, a new one. We have Wilmington that Pastor Jason is doing. and Maybe one more, maybe one more. Maybe Muhib, which I have Pastor Muhib here. He's an amazing man. And I'm thinking about him. About every day I'm thinking about you, Pastor. I think you're an amazing guy. How you, you use your gifts, how you minister, and how available you are, and how beautiful that is. This is God's work, but the way, and the work happens by faith. Maybe you're a mom with five kids, 45 kids, changing diapers. Maybe you're a mom just hardly surviving. You're just breathing underwater. Just the nostrils are above the water right there. Just, oh, just hardly making it. Uh, remember the whales up in the Bering Sea? Anybody remember that story? The whales up there? 
They were frozen in the water. The ocean froze quickly, very fast, and the whales couldn't get it. They, so a helicopter dropped explosives to break up and give breathing holes for the whales to get out into the open water. Isn't that cool? Thank God for helicopters. <laughs> and these whales got out in the Pacific Ocean and they went on their merry way. I think believers need breathing holes. Like, Lord, I'm dying. Even I'm in the church, I need a breathing hole. Give me a breathing hole, Lord. I need, a, I need the body. I need a vision. I need an outreach. I need to reach out into the woods here. Or I need to go to New Jersey and pick a city. I need to knock on some doors or be in a pizza shop. I need to live in faith. I need to lay my hands on somebody and pray for them. And it can happen. You know, the, I, I think I've told this story, haven't I? This story? Remember that one, number 62? Remember, I tell the story so often, I just give the numbers. Knocked on a door in Worcester, true story. This woman came to the door speaking Spanish. I look behind her, and there's a man on the floor, on the carpet, with a remote, going like this. And he's just holding his eye. So we talk in English, and because uh, I don't speak Spanish. And uh, we... There, there we are. And I go, is he, is he okay? She said he has pain in his eye. And I said, okay, can we come in and pray for him? She said, yes. So he speaks only Spanish. She translates. We, we have a prayer there. And he's like holding his eye. And then the next morning in church, he comes with her. And he's going this. He's going like this. You know what he's doing? He's testing his healed eye. His eye was healed. <laughs> he's looking at me. He doesn't understand anything I'm saying, right? But it doesn't matter. He's looking at me like this, and then he's going. Isn't that amazing? What happens by faith, right? You have faith. We, we are called to it. Let's live in it. Let's walk with him in it. How great things happen with simple people like us who live with Jesus in our lives by faith. Amen. Could you pray with me, please? Lord, we thank you for this holy congregation. So, uh, guards at the unknown soldier have great respect for what they do, and so do we. The guards at that tomb, they, it says they will not drink alcohol the rest of their lives. They will not swear. Uh, they will, they, and even part of the time, they study who is buried in that cemetery without any TV. What amazing respect they are given to that. How much more in our lives of faith before you a holy and living God has paid great respect to us through giving us your son and called us to live by faith in you. Sometimes it looks foolish to be honest walking around Jericho time and time and time again. But God is in it. God is in it. Praying our prayers for our people and our, our families and things that are in life, but God is in it. God is in it. Going to Bible college, but God is in it. Going to church service, God is in it. Going into the woods, but God is in it. Going on the mission field. God is in it. If you're here today and you don't have Jesus, you need him more than anything, you'd be shocked if you could see only for a second what is ahead of you without him. You must have him. You must be born again. You must believe in him. You must put your trust in him. Say to Jesus, I, 
I, I believe in you. I, I don't have a lot of faith, but I believe in you. I ask you into my life, save me. Forgive me. It seems like there's a barrier between me and you. I, I'm afraid. I don't know why. I, I am guilty. I don't know what it is. And we all understand it. But we say to you, come by faith. Believe in him. And he'll take it away and draw you. You, you are with him and in him. Tonight, by your faith in him, say, Jesus, I believe in you. Raise your hand, anyone here in the auditorium, anyone at all. Yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus, anyone. Okay. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for this day you gave us, the holiday season coming this week. Uh, our service on Wednesday, our walk of faith in the Christmas holiday season, our, our walk in the bigger picture. For every child of God here, thank you. Jesus, do this by your great grace in our hearts. In Christ's name, amen.
Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe. of faith. Thank you tonight that we, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Father, as we leave the chapel tonight, we do pray that you would stir up faith in our hearts tonight and throughout the week and help us to believe you, God, for great and mighty things which we haven't even seen. We ask you to work mightily in the midst of each one, each family, each home, in each business. We pray, Father, that this faith would please you. We know without it we cannot please you. We pray that we would live by a faith this week that pleases you and brings great honor and glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you that we are children of Abraham. Abraham, the father of our faith, and we, his children, simply because we believe. We thank you for that. Bless your people. Cover us. Protect us, Lord. Uh, we know we're focusing. Our hearts are just thinking about gratitude all week long, and it's something that characterizes our lives every day, of every week, every month, and every year. But this week in particular, yes, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us a brand new life in Christ. Bless us, thank you, worship you tonight from our hearts by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed. There'll be a wrap in the cafeteria in 20 minutes.